Hi everyone, this is Holly Jackson. I'm one of the librarians at North Hall Library. I'm excited to present a new research tips video for you on what you need to write an annotated bibliography. So there are three different types of annotated bibliographies. You've got descriptive, which is also known as indicative, evaluative, which is also known as critical, and informative, which is also known as summative. So descriptive annotated bibliographies give a brief summary or overview of the work that you've looked at. So for this example, teaching, writing, in all disciplines, the sample would be, this book includes 10 essays on writing across the curriculum programs, teaching writing in disciplines other than English, and teaching techniques for using writing as learning. And then it goes on to list some of the specific essays that are listed in this work. So just a brief summary. Evaluative annotated bibliographies give an analysis of the work and can discuss comparisons to other works, um, as well as the authority of the author or publisher, any biases, strengths and weaknesses, how accurate it is, and other useful points for your research. So for this example article, Ageist Language in Psychological Research, the annotated bibliography entry would be an article on avoiding ageist bias in researching, discussing objective research design, and how to report what the research actually demonstrates without adding value-laden assumptions. Shea's general emphasis on how to avoid ageist bias does not offer any specific examples of ageism in research, but Shea's approach to ageist bias provides an alternative perspective to my own viewpoint. So you can see that they've done um, an analysis, so uh, here's how it's going to be useful and that it's going to serve as an alternative perspective in the person's paper that they're writing. Informative annotated bibliographies are a neutral summary of the work that includes the thesis, the argument or hypothesis, list of proofs, and the conclusion or results of the work. So for that same ageist language and psychological research article would be an article on avoiding ageist bias in research, including discussion on objective research design and on how to report what the research actually demonstrates without adding value-laden assumptions. But spoiler alert, your professors are going to probably want a combination of a short summary and how you're going to use it in your research. So here's an example of an annotated bibliography that I actually made um, as I was working on an article of my own. So uh, you can see that I've got the annotated bibliography over on the side and I pulled out the specific example, which is Lily Todorinovos Writing Center and Library Collaboration and Telephone Survey of Academic Libraries. And so I've given a description and then um, how my work kind of compares. So uh, here's that one pulled out. You can see I've got a summary in that first paragraph and how I'm going to use it in the article in the second paragraph. So some sort of a combination is usually what your professors are going to want. So here are the steps to writing an annotated bibliography. First, you got to find your sources. Then you need to read them, make notes, and evaluate them. And then cite and write. So step one, finding your sources. Uh, how has research in your field been published or presented? Is it in books, scholarly articles, conference presentations, dissertations, news articles, academic blogs, or websites? Is it in primary resources? Is it in artwork or music pieces? Um, figure out what exactly it is that you're going to need as you're putting together your research. And then go out and find them. A lot of these you're probably going to be able to find through the library's website, um, but I know a lot of people are tempted to start with Google. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but as you can see in this image here, Google and any sort of internet search engine really have access to what we call the surface web. They're only going to be able to get the top layer of that ocean of information. To be able to get to the databases and academic journals, things that people have paid for, specifically the library and the university, um, that require a login, which is just your Mansfield email address and password, those require us to go a little bit deeper than just Google. You can also take a look in the resources used in any book or article or resource that you're taking a look at and see if those are going to be helpful for you. We call this mining the bibliography when we take a look at the work cited of the articles we like and pull things from there. 
There is a worksheet available for you on the research guide, which is just lib.mansfield.edu slash research tips, and you'll find the annotated bibliography worksheet. And you can feel free to print this off or save it to your computer and make some notes um, if this is helpful for you. But we designed this in mind for annotated bibliographies. So putting down all the basics, your author, the article or chapter title, what the publication is, the date, the database you found things, all the things you need to write your citation. And then below that are the different areas that will help you as you're working on your annotation and even as you go in to write a potential literature review. So your summary, what is this article or book or other resource examine, the methodology, how did the author study the issue? Did they do a lot of reading of their own? Did they actually conduct a lab experiment? What are their findings or results? What are the questions or gaps in the research that still exist after you've read this? Uh, representation. Are there any populations, aspects, or areas that you don't see represented that you think should be? And keywords, what are the keywords or terms used in this piece? When you look up a book or an article in the databases, you'll see that there are subject headings that are listed along with the title and the abstract and all the other information. Those are keywords that you can use in your search. Jot some of the ones down that might be useful. And as you're reading your sources, consider the smell test. So what is the source of the information you're looking at? What's the motivation for why it was written or published? What is the evidence that they're using? What's the logic behind it? And what did they leave out? And also ask the basic six questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how? Who wrote it? Who published it? Who is cited in it? What is it about? What connection does it have to your research question? That last one is so important. Any source that you're using should have an obvious tie to the question that you're trying to answer by writing this paper. When was it written? When was it last edited? Where does it take place? Where can you access the full text? Why was it written? Why was it funded? Why was this necessary? How did they do their research? How did they present their findings? These are all things that are very helpful to consider as you're looking at your sources. And step three is cite and write. So make sure that you are actually citing correctly based on whatever citation style it is that your professor wants you to use, whether that's MLA, APA, Chicago, Caribbean, some other citation style. If you take a look at lib.mansfield.edu slash citation, you'll find that we have um, quite a few resources suggested. Um, and we also have copies of all the manuals in the library for you to reference. General tips, be sure to read through the assignment directions from your professor. I know this seems really obvious, but sometimes going back and looking at them can help answer a lot of questions. They usually provide plenty of details about what they wanna see in your annotated bibliographies. Annotations tend to be about 100 to 200 words, but check your assignments. Sometimes your professors want more or less than that. And annotations should be in your own words. It's best to avoid using quotes. If you need a second opinion or somebody to ask questions about your work, obviously feel free to talk to your professor, but you can also contact the Writing Center. Their link is right here on the page for you and it will also be in that research guide. And if you have questions, feel free to ask a librarian. We're really happy to help. Um, you can chat with us, email us, call us, or even visit us. More information can be found on the website at lib.mansfield.edu. Thanks for joining in and have a great rest of your day.